So this is an update to the ETE 437 lab on velocity of propagation on cables. The setup is quite simple. We have the generator, sine wave generator in this case. The output of the generator goes to channel 1 of the scope. It is fed to the scope using a BNC T connector. The output of that signal goes to channel 2. where there is another BNCT connector and on the final end there is a 50 ohm termination. This is an all 50 ohm system. 50 ohm termination, 50 ohm cable, 50 ohm cable from the generator. If you're unsure about that, contact the instructor. Okay, so let's power up the, the um, scope and we'll look at the signal. Now, because this is a velocity of propagation experiment, what we expect to see is two signals, one from channel 1, one from channel 2, slightly delayed by the time delay of this cable. Right, the signal is traveling at, at a very high speed, not the speed of light, but close. So here's what we see on the display. The yellow is the input and the uh, blue is the output or channel 2. The uh, measurements that you want to make, you want to measure the frequency. You can set that from the horizontal button and it is now reading at 4 megahertz. The counter also displays it at 4 megahertz. With arbitrary waveform generators, frequency is not a critical measurement because they are so accurate. Then we also have selected for our other measurements, we have selected the delay from channel 1 to 2. Make sure you select the delay from 1 to 2, not the other way around. The second measurement on the falling edges because we want the rising edges of each signal, which is this one and then the phase from 1 to 2 also. Now we have those measurements down here, the delay and the phase and the frequency. It's not required to measure anything else. So record that data for all frequencies from 4 to 15 megahertz in 1 megahertz step and then put it in a spreadsheet. So this is what the data looks like in the spreadsheet. We have the frequency, the time delay, and uh, phase shift in degrees, time delay in nanoseconds. If I plot the data, you'll see two graphs. The blue graph is the time delay data, and it's essentially constant, which we expect it to be. The phase, however, is linear with respect to frequency, because as the frequency goes up, the <clears throat> wavelength goes down, and the portion of the cable representing a phase shift gets larger. So we see that curve go up linearly. Now, what are the catches in these measurements? For one thing, the cable, there's a lot of connectors here, and so if you touch your connectors a lot, you may see variations in the signal levels. So just try not to handle the cables too much or you might get a variation. The second thing that you might find is that at some frequencies, you may get a negative value. So in this case, we're seeing minus 33 to, um, nanoseconds and minus 166 degrees. Now, a signal cannot be advanced or in negative time with respect to its input signal. So what is happening here? Well, if we see, watch the cursors, the dotted line represents the signal trace time on the uh, input cursor. 
So that's our starting time. The scope looks for the nearest similar curve on the blue, blue signal and tries to compare it. So it ends up, instead of being forward, it goes backwards to minus 32. If you see a negative phase, just add 360 degrees to it, and that will resolve the issue. So minus 167 degrees is really positive 193 degrees. Uh, for the time delay, you need to take the period, which is 1 over the frequency, and add that value to minus the negative delay, and that will give you your positive phase shifts. So that's just an artifact of the scope having trouble measuring these signals. As an engineer, you've got to look at your data and understand where things might be wrong from your instrument. A couple other gotchas on this equipment. Remember, you must enable the output, output by pushing the output button. If there's no button pushed, you have no signal. In terms of getting a good, clean-looking signal, I always like to use um, under Acquire, pressing the Acquire button. I like to use Averaging because it, it gives you a little cleaner looking signal. If you want to acquire the data to your flash drive, that's easy enough to do. Just plug in your flash drive, it will be recognized. Press Storage, and then you can select what kind of waveform you want. Most of the time we're going to be selecting pictures. If you want to take a picture with your smartphone, that's fine. They're good enough. And you, but you can see you can select traces, waveform setups, or even data files, CSV files. But we'll leave it as a PNG picture file. Then we'll go to save it. Before you click save, click disk management to see which disk it's saving to. In this case, we want D. That's our disk, and we see it start flashing there. So now we're ready to uh, save it to a new... Um, I already created a directory, so I will select that directory. I've already saved a file already, so we'll just say new file, and it will automatically auto-index the value, so new file 2. And then I will select OK, and the data will be saved to your flash drive. Now, if you are, um, you can go in and, of course, name the files. It's kind of tedious to name the files by, by using the cursor uh, adjustment system, but you can select each letter and enter that data. I never do that. That's too tedious. So just keep track that, in this case, new file 3 is for 4 megahertz or, or whatever frequency is involved. And that's all we need from the lab. Good luck.